Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting IBM Transformation Extender. Today's topic is using the restart attribute and the reject function with Transformation Extender to identify bad data. Please follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. So let's start this demonstration in the IBM Transformation Extender 1003 Design Studio. As you'll see, I have a project called Restart Reject. I have a map open, map source file called example.mms, and within that map source file, I have one map, one executable map called example1. Over here on the right, we have three additional open windows that show the current contents of three files, three text files. The first one is input.txt, the second one, currently empty, is output.txt, and something we'll be using later, rejected.txt, in the third window. Okay, so my map is fairly simple. It has uh, one input card, one output card. It validates the input and maps it to the output structure. In my particular instance, the output structure is identical to the input structure, but that wouldn't necessarily always be the case. Um, but it's just good enough for my demonstration here. So what do we have? On the input side, we have um, some data in rows. Uh, it's obvious that the um, each row contains four items of data. Um, the first, first field in the row is a name. The second field represents an age. The third field represents a department. And the fourth field represents a start date, for example. Um, we can see that there are mistakes uh, within the data. We can see that, for example, Jane Smith uh, started on the 6th of the 17th month. I don't think we'll find a 17th month. And Juliet Stevenson, um, there doesn't appear to be a comma between her name and her age. So why I'm expecting this data to completely fail when I run this map. So let's do that now. Let's build and run. So we get the failure as expected. One or more inputs was invalid. Our output file is not produced at all because the map has failed and the output has rolled back. Uh, the audit log tells me one or more inputs was invalid. And we don't have much clue as to what exactly went wrong. We can pick through the trace file, which I also have here on screen. We can scroll down through and we can look for validation errors. For example, it tells me here that Jane Smith is invalid data of type. And we go backwards a little bit and we find out that it has actually picked out that date and said it's an invalid date. Uh, further down, we can find another error. Um, do, 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 what, have we, what have we got here? Julia Stevenson, Dave Clark. It's very difficult to find these errors. Okay, so here it's saying that um, CRLF com Barry Spadden is invalid date, data type of start date. Uh, it seems to have got very confused there because of the missing comma. Um, there we go. Um, sales is invalid data type age. So obviously sales is not the age field. Uh, very easy to pick through when we've only got five lines of data here. Not so easy when we've got a million rows. So sometimes the uh, MTR file, not the greatest way to identify bad data. So let's go into the main point of this demonstration, the restart attribute and the reject function. I'm going to open the type tree. Um, open type tree. Okay, and within file, um, which has multiple rows, um, let's drag that over here and pop that there for me. It's gone to the wrong place, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so on the row um, aspect of the file group, I'm going to turn on the restart attribute. So I'm here on rows, and I'm going to click this restart button here. Okay, I'm going to close that and say, yes, I want to save it. Within the type tree itself, I'm going to do tree, analyze, structure, and logic. And it hasn't found any issues with that, and we're going to save that asks if we want to update the open maps we're going to go with yes and then we're going to close the type tree okay so what difference does that make to our map um, let's go back to our log empty it before we start 
and back to our map and we're going to build and run one more time. Okay, so the, the issue has changed now. It's now input to type contains errors. You will note that input type contains errors is not a failure. It's just a warning and there's, it's a warning and it's a code 28. And because it's only a warning, the map has actually completed and produced output. So here we are, here we are, we have three of our records out of our original input of five. It's found a problem with two of them. So that's great. Using the restart attribute, we've been able to identify the good data within our data. Um, let's go a step further and use the reject function to identify the bad data. So I'm going to create a new output card here. I'm going to call the output card rejected. The type tree I'm going to use is a simple uh, type tree that has a file object which has uh, repeating text items delimited with a new line character. Rejected.txt. Okay, so we're writing to the file rejected.txt. What do we need to put into uh, here? We need to put the reject function equals reject and then we want any item from file, from row. Okay, so now this output card 2 will take any rejected rows and write them to rejected.txt. Let's build and run. We're still getting the warning, input type contains errors, that's fine. But now you will see that in the rejected file we are getting our two bad rows. Now that we can see them separated out from the input data, which as I said may be a million rows or more, it's easier to spot the bad data. So, so for example, Jane Smith, we've got the 6th of the 17th here, that's obviously a problem. Whoever typed it in, they probably meant the 17th of the 6th. I mean, you would obviously go off and check it, but that would be my first guess. So let's go to the input side here and fix that particular issue. Let's pop 6 in there and 17 in there and save the data. Let's run our map one more time. Okay, you will now know that output contains four records because we fixed that one record, but Juliet Stevenson, Stevenson is still wrong. Now we can look and we can say, oh, there's no comma between her name and her age, so let's pop a comma in there. Okay, save, go back to the map, run. Okay, we've still got a problem, so what could this be now? Well, it's difficult to tell but we can go back to the trace file and scroll down and look for the um, 141 being listed. Um, where will we find it? There we go. Um, 141 was found to be of type age fields. However, 141 failed component rule test for component number two. That's the age. Now, if we go open the type tree again, we can have a look at the component rules, but I can tell you now that it's expecting the age to be less than 100. And we're expecting the employees in this database to be less than 100 years old. So let's go back to the input file and remove the one from the beginning there because we found out that she's actually only 41 years old. And we save the file and we build and we run and now we get map completed successfully. All of our records are in our output. Rejected is completely empty and the log concurs with our finishing um, message map completed successfully. Great. Here's another couple of enhancements for you. Let's pop the um, mistakes back in again for the moment. We'll just pop her back to 141, pop this one back to 617 and save. During the main running of the map, you may not want the map to complete with a warning. Oh, you may want it to ignore that warning and assume that the map was completed successfully. We can go into the map settings and we can change the warnings from every to be a warn to be a custom and then within custom we can find input type contains errors and change it from a warning to an ignore. So it will ignore that now and although it still will report in the audit log a warning, the map will not actually finish with a warning. So we'll build and we'll run and it reports map completed successfully. In the audit log we've got map status is valid, map return zero, but we've still got the message input type contains errors and obviously the output.txt still shows three good records, two bad ones. Okay, what if we want to um, have the map fail uh, instead of coming up with a warning? 
uh, but we still we don't want the output to be created we don't want it to go off and update some system with half the data but we still want to look at the rejected records okay so we're going to need a third output card to do an additional bit of trickery here so let's do a new output card um, test for rejects we'll call the card test for rejects I will reuse the rejected type tree and just borrow the text item entry from it um, this app actually won't go anywhere we'll just send it out to sync and what we will do is we will say um, that we'll drag text items into test for rejects and then we'll say if count so we're counting how many text items are in the rejected um, repeating group is greater than zero if it's greater than zero that means there are some that means we want to fail the map rejects found okay so now if we do count if we count the rejects and if there are more than zero of them the fail function is triggered and it will say rejects found well that's all well and good but if we fail the map our rejected file will not get created and I can prove that by temporarily emptying it and saving control all delete save so both of those are now empty if I build and run the fail function is triggered however output and rejected neither of them are written that's no good because I want I want to see the rejected so let's go into the properties of output card 2 and say that on a failure of a map we still want output card 2 to be written and build and run so now we've got the map has failed it's found rejects and it's telling us all about the rejects right down there for us to just look at without updating any third part and end systems or, or, or messing up our um, transactionality so there we go that's the example of using reject and restart attribute to identify bad data I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button and, perhaps, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Reach out to me on Twitter at PaulBrettIBM. Thank you.